G'day guys, Ian here, and today we're gonna to show you how we set up this beautiful five foot enclosure for our little male Eastern Blue Tongue Lizard. Now guys, if you are new to this channel and you haven't already done so, please do us a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, and welcome to Cookies Critters. Okay guys, so the first thing that we need to talk about is this bad boy right here, the enclosure for your blue tongue lizard. Now, simply we have repurposed this five foot central bearded dragon enclosure uh, to use as a demonstration purpose for this video on how to set up a blue tongue lizard enclosure. Now, the, uh, the background here in this enclosure is ideally suited for a central bearded dragon with the high elevated basking spots and uh, plenty of places that it can move along and climb. But, you know, at the end of the day, if a little blue tongue with its stumpy little legs can climb its way up onto these basking ledges, it's, uh, it's good for its brain, a bit of mental enrichment and physical activity as well. So the enclosure size is super critical. Uh, we've gone bigger than we need to, but if you have the space in your house, uh, and you can afford to go a larger enclosure, then especially for an adult blue tongue, uh, something this big is perfectly suitable for a adult blue tongue lizard. Now, uh, the bare minimum recommendation for a adult blue tongue is a four foot, so 1.2 meter by uh, two foot, so 600 mil deep enclosure. They don't need a lot of height. They don't need the height that this enclosure has, uh, but since we've got it, we're gonna use it and uh, we're gonna go from there. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about in this video is heating and lighting. Now, for an enclosure this big, we do have a 100 watt basking light installed on the inside of the roof of this enclosure. And we've also gone ahead and we've installed a 5% uh, T5 UVB. UVB is one of those uh, conversations, one of those situations where uh, there's so much discussion, there's so much debate around whether or not blue tongue lizards need UVB. But I personally think that UVB for a blue tongue lizard is beneficial. You cannot go wrong, providing that you do offer them a low percentage, a low strength UVB, such as a 5% or a 6% UVB. Okay, so we've got our basking spot. So the hot side of the enclosure will be over here. And we do have our 5% UVB tube and it is a three foot, so 90 centimeter T5 UVB. Does have a lot of coverage, but right down the end of this enclosure here, it's nice and cool, it's nice and dark, it's completely UV zero, a dead spot for UV. So that way the blue tongue, if it doesn't want to bask and soak up that UV to, uh, to metabolize and to transfer the calcium into vitamin D3, it can just move away from the UV and away from the basking spot. Now, talking about the actual temperature gradient for a blue tongue lizard, it is specifically related to the subspecies of blue tongue that you are keeping. Obviously, if you're keeping alpines, they are a lot cooler. If you're keeping northerns and centrillions and westerns, they do require higher heat. Now, a, an eastern blue tongue, which is what's gonna be going in here, it is a, uh, a hybrid eastern northern, it's gonna need a temperature gradient around about 28 to 32 degrees. So simply we can achieve that by the, uh, the strength of the basking light. Currently there is a 100 watt uh, basking light inside the enclosure. And if we find that the thermostat is uh, kicking on and kicking off far too often, uh, and that light's going off and on, then we can simply reduce the wattage of the basking light down to around about a 75 watt to, uh, to drop the temperature without the thermostat kicking on and kicking off. Hey right, guys, so the next thing that we need to talk about is substrate when it comes to setting up your blue tongue lizard enclosure. Now, if you're the kind of keeper that likes to have things sterile and you're gonna use things like paper towel, butcher's paper or newspaper, and you're gonna think that that's appropriate for a blue tongue lizard, well, yes, people do have relative success when using these mediums as a substrate, the issue is 
the lizard wants to burrow and bury itself underneath its substrate. So if you just give it paper and you think that you can just grab a, uh, a soiled piece of paper with, with urate and, uh, and feces on there to chuck it out for easy cleaning, then potentially your blue tongue lizard is just gonna slide itself all the way under all of the paper, potentially just defecating on the actual uh, enclosure base itself, which is more work in the long run to clean up. Whereas things like your, your, your loose litter, your loose substrates, uh, this one here is a fine pine shavings. Uh, other substrates that we use and we recommend is eucalyptus mulch, readily available in large 20 kilo, 40 kilo landscape size bags. Very economical choice when it comes to picking a substrate for your blue tongue lizard. Yes, there are plenty of commercially available retail types of substrate for blue tongues. You've got aspens and you've got chipsy, uh, and you've got all those kind of repti barks, all those kind of things. But for a blue tongue, there is a cheap and easy alternative. You've got pine shavings, you've got eucalyptus mulch, you've got straws, you've got hay. They are perfectly adequate for your blue tongue lizard. So simply, we're gonna offload this bag into the enclosure. We wanna achieve around about two to three inches, if not four inches uh, of depth when it comes to our substrate. So that way the lizard can burrow underneath and, uh, and feel quite safe inside its enclosure. Okay, so we just simply wanna spread that around, get it as even and uniform as possible. Now, the awesome thing about having loose substrates is it sort of acts as a natural hide for your blue tongue lizard. Yes, we're gonna put in artificial hides a little bit later on, but obviously a blue tongue can slide underneath it and feel concealed and safe. So guys, we've got our substrate in. It is around about two and a half inches, three inches thick. So I'm pretty happy with the, uh, with the layer that we do have in there. The next thing that we need to do is we need to talk about enclosure furnishings. Now what we mean by furnishings, things like hides, uh, food bowls, water bowls, and decorations. Obviously the decorations is more of an aesthetic thing for us, but it does offer a bit of mental enrichment for the blue tongue, whether it's a climbing or even a, uh, another object like a fake plant to hide behind. These things are all critical when it comes to your blue tongue lizard enclosure setup. Hey guys, so obviously there are heaps of hides readily available online and uh, in your retail pet stores. Now you can buy something like this, like a little cave or a hollowed out log. Uh, simply you can even go out into the bush providing that you don't need a permit to, uh, to go and collect. Um, but you can actually pick up uh, natural pieces of timber that have been hollowed out as long as you, uh, you clean it, you treat it in boiling water, you get rid of things like mites, spiders, ants, all those kind of things, ticks. Um, it's not an issue to use natural pieces of timber inside your enclosure. Now, we do have a large enclosure, so we are going to offer our blue tongue a hide on the hot, on the basking side, and a hide on the cool side as well. We're just gonna play around with it, and we're gonna see how it fits, and how it feels, and how it looks. Uh, before we settle on the final design. Okay, so when you are actually setting up the, uh, the scape of your enclosure, uh, have a few considerations in mind. Uh, things like, where's your water bowl gonna go? Where's your food bowl gonna go? Now, obviously, these two things, they need to go on the cool side of the enclosure. If you put water, on the hot side, directly underneath your basking line, that water is gonna evaporate so quick, it's gonna increase the humidity inside the enclosure, possibly lead to things like uh, respiratory infections and issues with shedding, um, and potentially even uh, wounds not healing if it does scratch itself or uh, get a bite during mating. So uh, water always on the cool side, food bowls always on the cool side as well. So all we are talking about food plates and dishes for blue tongue lizards. Now, I always say to people that a blue tongue lizard is like a bulldozer or a snowplow. 
when they move through that substrate, they are just gonna push it all the way through. And if you've got a little lightweight plate, something maybe uh, a quarter or the third of the size of this plate, simply when the, uh, when the bulldozer, when the, uh, when the blue tongue lizard comes underneath, it's gonna tip that plate upside down, uh, just rendering whatever food was left on that plate useless. Potentially, it's just gonna be fouled up with all the loose litter anyway. So, nice, large, oversized. Yes, I've got the size of my head, it's ridiculously big, but when we think about how much we're gonna feed our adult blue tongue, about the size of its head, uh, there is uh, definitely an oversized bowl or a dish suitable for this enclosure. So once again, we are gonna set this up on the cool side of the enclosure and we're gonna uh, position it somewhere around this half hollowed out log. So that way the blue tongue can come out, it can eat, it can go back in, it can hide. Uh, it can do all these things during the middle of the day while people are moving around in a high traffic area. It is gonna feel safe to eat if it's near this enclosure. Okay, so we've got our essential furniture inside the enclosure. We've got our two hides, uh, we've got our water bowl, we've got our food plate. Other considerations are, you know, decorations. Obviously, for us as keepers, we want these enclosures to look as beautiful as possible. So things like branches, plants, vines, uh, little sculptures, little tiki heads, little uh, Aztec temples, uh, skulls, whatever you're into, whatever sort of uh, floats your boat, essentially. Things like this, this uh, grapevine driftwood. Uh, it is a natural piece to go inside an enclosure. Uh, obviously a blue tongue with like little dumpy little legs, they are really clumsy climbers. Now, this is a pretty solid piece. It's quite thick, it's quite girthy. Uh, a blue tongue potentially could climb, but being a bit clumsy, they will possibly fall off. Uh, and if we find that he's falling off too, uh, too frequently and potentially risking hurting himself, we will have to remove this. But from a aesthetic point of view, we're gonna try it out, see how it fits. And if we're happy with it, we'll leave it for now and we'll reassess later on. Okay, so when it comes to actually choosing plants to, uh, to decorate the inside of the enclosure, one thing to consider, obviously uh, blue tongues are omnivorous. They will eat uh, plant-based material and protein-based uh, food items. So if you put something that looks like a plant inside the enclosure and you notice that your blue tongue is chewing on it, then uh, it's probably a good idea to remove it and uh, either put natural like cut living branches inside the enclosure for them to chew on and get some mental enrichment or to not have um, plants in there at all. But simply things like these little vines, we can simply punch that down in the actual uh, foam background itself and we can do the same. We can push these into the foam background to, uh, to just add little aesthetic uh, bits of interest and uh, hopefully somewhere for him to hide behind. Okay, so we now have the uh, the enclosure scaped up. I'm gonna bring it in nice and close so that way you can see what we've done. We have our little hide on the basking side. We've got some little uh, little plants and little things to, to climb on to, uh, to move around and under. As we move across to the cooler side, the middle of the enclosure, we do have the half hollowed out log. Got the food bowl and we have a water bowl all the way on the cool side. Now, concealed 
just there. We do have a thermostat probe as well. Uh, that's going to regulate our temperature inside the enclosure. All right, so it's now time to put our little superstar of this show into its enclosure. Now, he is a POS double head alabaster, which means he does have possible uh, anery and possible hypomelanistic uh, recessive genes uh, to this lizard. And we we're hoping to prove that out during this breeding season. But anyway, a nice large boy deserves a nice beautiful enclosure for him to live out his life. So we're gonna pop him in. Uh, we still need to think, do things like uh, uh, fill up its water bowl, but we will do that once we move it into its final location. Okay guys, so that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you did, please do smash that like button. If you haven't already done so, subscribe and turn on those post notifications. That way you're not gonna miss a coming video. Now guys, we really appreciate your support watching our content and we would love to hear any recommendations or suggestions from you, the viewers, of content that you would like us to create. Whether it's more of this educational kind of stuff or whether it's just our daily routine or just random stuff like uh, a blue tongue eating 20 chicken livers or something like that, something random, we don't really care. We would love to hear what you, the viewers, want to watch. So guys, please let us know, drop some comments down in the section below. And uh, guys, until next time, if you got them, keep your beard treated and your blue tongues heated.